All right, guys, it's Charlie Tango 1994 back with another YouTube video. If you're wondering, should I get an amplifier? You've probably decided you need more power output, or someone you know has told you to buy one. Before we enter into a debate about acquiring an amplifier, let's start by first asking a different question. Do you actually need an amplifier? A regular CB radio is going to have a carrier also known as a dead key of approximately 3 to 4 watts. When the carrier is modulated, output on the radio may reach 10 to 12 watts on average, with some models hitting around 15 to 18 watts. Single sideband will normally have an output of 12 watts, with some models hitting about 18 to 20 watts after tuning. If an operator has properly set up their antenna, these output numbers are more than enough for basic local in-town communications. When you've found yourself in the hobby long enough, you'll hear many accounts of users stating their signal doesn't get very far. So they invest in high power radios or amps, not appreciating that the issue from the onset was a substandard antenna installation. Ham radio operators love to tell stories of using one watt on a dipole antenna to speak to stations 9,000 miles away. But what they are claiming is honestly the truth. If you're new to this channel and would like to see more CB related videos, feel free to hit the subscribe button below and watch out for new videos uploaded every Wednesday. If you enjoy my videos, don't forget to hit the like button or leave me a note in the comments section. Also, if you're new to CB radio, watch this video through to the end to find out more about the free gift I offer to all of my subscribers. It's definitely feasible to talk long distances and even talk pretty good distances locally with a good antenna and a legal radio. Before you consider adding an amplifier, you should sit down and think about some answers to the following questions. I know this sounds like going back to school, but it can save you a lot of money and trouble in the long run. First question, do you care about breaking the law? Okay. So many more experienced CBers might chuckle at seeing this question, but I wouldn't be doing my due diligence if I didn't touch on this from the very beginning. Using an amplifier with your CB radio is against the law, and you could be fined and maybe even be given jail time. Scary? Whilst the FCC and the majority of ham radio operators will remonstrate your acquisition and use of an amplifier, it's a basic truth that there are great numbers of people in the USA and in other countries where it's illegal running CB amplifiers and none have ever been troubled by the police. If you don't believe in exceeding the speed limit, you most likely should never use an amplifier. But for a large portion of the CB community, amplifiers are just another tool they use on a daily basis. If you employ your amplifier sensibly, you probably could be on the radio for a hundred years and never have a problem. But if you intend to be an idiot and play music for your 1000 watt amplifier, you could well get a visit from the cops. While adding an amplifier won't put you on America's most wanted, it's best to be smart in how you operate and try not to cause problems for yourself or others. Still want to fit an amplifier? Okay. Have you optimised your current setup? This is the start point for most CBers, and if you're interested in this, I'm presuming you'd like an amplifier because you would like to talk even further, because more power equals more distance. While this is undoubtedly true, you can also accomplish more range with an effectively tuned radio and antenna system. If you presently have a Wilson 3 foot fiberglass antenna on the back of your truck, you could easily get a 30% improvement in performance and distance by changing to a more lengthy antenna for example. Incorporating an amplifier could also give you an increase of 30% or greater with your current setup, but where's the sense of adding nitro to a station wagon? Get your current system assembled the right way and if you still want to talk further, then add the amplifier. Is your present system capable of dealing with additional wattage? There are a lot of people who rush out and purchase an amplifier without understanding that there is a great deal to know before setting one up for the first time. One extremely important factor to realise is that antennas have maximum wattage ratings. For instance, a K30 magnetic antenna 
has a manufacture rating of 300 watts. Now here's a little tip you should know. Manufacture ratings are typically very overstated. In this case, the K30 probably effectively rated for 150 watts. And even then, I wouldn't suggest putting that much power into the antenna. Genuinely, I'd only run around 75 watts into that antenna. What does that mean for your system? It means if your antenna is actually rated for 500 watts and you just bought a 6 transistor amplifier with an output rating of 600 watts, it would not be a great idea to use your existing antenna. Beyond the wattage ratings of your antenna, you also need to appreciate that amplifiers draw a great deal of electricity to produce their output. If your car only has a 90 amp alternator and your 6 pill amplifier is going to draw 100 amps, you will swiftly discover you bit off more than you can chew. A final thing to think about is your current radio. Amplifiers generally don't like to be overdriven, meaning excessive input from your radio. If your current radio isn't set up to run with an amplifier, you can easily ruin your expensive amplifier. Next question, how much power do you need? When aiming to determine how much power you need, it's best to evaluate your aims. If you and another buddy head out 4x4 and you often tend to find that you have difficulty hearing one another over the next hilltop, then a basic 100 watts may be sufficient to resolve your problem. Again, 100 watts might be all you need if you like to talk skip and if you're having trouble making contacts on busy days. I'm going to let you in on another little secret. 100 watts is what I like to call the magic number. For the majority of people, it definitely is sufficient power to help you reach a little farther without needing to devote a great deal of cash or more significant enhancements on your radio. Next question. Do you plan to talk on AM or sideband or both? AM and SSB modes can demand different features from an amplifier. An SSB amplifier will need a delay while an amplifier for AM does not. If you have a straight 40 channel AM only or FM only radio, then you can pretty much buy any one of the CB amplifiers on the market. However, if you plan to use your amplifier for SSB, you'll want to consider a few additional things, including the previously mentioned delay, as well as the amplifier class. Most AMCB amplifiers have the tendency to be a bit dirty in regards to their output signal, meaning that there are certain levels of distortion, harmonics, and other undesirable effects. While there are definitely problems, and usually found on Class C amplifiers for the AM audience, a lot of the effects will go undetected and aren't a major worry to those operators. On SSB, however, a dirty amplifier can impact how you sound. Enough that as you use it on the air, people may remark in a negative way about your station. So it's best to acquire the right amplifier for the task. On the subject of AM versus SSB, there is again the concern of input and overdrive in your amplifier. SSB transmissions don't have a carrier, so most of the time your radio doesn't need any special modifications to transmit on SSB without an amplifier. On AM, however, if your radio has a carrier of 4 watts and the amplifier has an input criteria of 2 watts, you will have to reduce your radio's carrier. Reducing the carrier of a radio could mean opening the radio and changing something on the board. Or it might call for more radical modifications using resistors and capacitors something you may want a CB radio shop to carry out for you. Again, there are questions that need to be answered before shelling out dough for a shiny new amplifier. Once you've determined if your current setup is ready for an amplifier and just how much power you need to run, then the next step is picking up the right amplifier for your purposes. Hope you enjoyed watching this video and as a thank you to you, particularly if you're new to CB Radio or returning to it after many years, I've put together a free information series called The Beginner's Guide to CB Radio, which I'm sharing with all of my subscribers. To find out more, click the link in the top right corner now.